Uh, robotic and goal and mission is basically to take uh, the advantages of using robotics platform, autonomous robotic platforms as we can uh, maybe point out and see here. It's an autonomous uh, robotic systems and the idea and the mission is to be able to put it out with uh, the, the factories or even out in the home environment and that the robot will be able to assist and help in whatever task to the human uh, operators. And this is basically the goal and this is our, uh, I think, one of our main mission today is to be able to uh, make those systems which really high tech and everything. But again, today as, as part of this, uh, this uh, particular time, they are not uh, reachable and not uh, being able to uh, do uh, the mission autonomously enough. So this is the goal, the, 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 the short range goal basically is to make those systems more applicable and more uh, reliable for, for this uh, use. We have several cases. Uh, the Komodo will go out for uh, agricultural use and outdoor environment uh, for being able to do uh, autonomous tasks. Uh, the Armadillo here is more for uh, the industry as a personal assisting robotics and also for a home as a elderly care or something uh, more in the home environment as assistive robotics. So this is uh, two examples of systems that we are developing and uh, advancing with, with the uh, abilities and algorithms uh, for these uh, use cases. There is a big hype today about robotics. Uh, this is, um, th there was a uh, certain uh, phrases that this is the big uh, thing uh, today. Uh, and we do uh, notice it because in the early days that we begin in the company, there was a kind of robotics what, robotics where, you know, something like that. So today we do appreciate the hype about uh, robotics and the, the understanding of, of what is a robotic platform and stuff like that. Um, as, as I said, um, we, do, we do see uh, several use cases for, for the robotics and several applications that is right away. We do see a lot of uh, companies, big industrial companies, uh, that approach us like uh, basically the better maybe not to, to mention the names but uh, there is a lot of uh, productive companies uh, using all kind of uh, that manufacture all kind of uh, technology like computers and, and stuff like that that they see that in uh, the line the production line they need uh, assistive robotics for uh, it's not replacing but making uh, better use of the personnel uh, that in the, in the plant and by that, using robotics, autonomous robotics, to, to help them do uh, certain tests and then the, the technicians guys and uh, uh, the personnel will be able to, to advance to a more, uh, uh, to be able to advance to, to a more uh, problematic test that they do in their everyday day, but they don't have enough time for that. So this is the places we see a lot of use cases that were in every kind of week that uh, companies call us and want to use these uh, uh, robots for this and that application. They have all kinds of use cases. They need to bring something from the warehouse, for example, to the stations. They need to take something that was out of one machine to another station for uh, um, uh, continue the production line. And they don't want to use uh, some kind of uh, human uh, human labor to, to just pass the thing between the stations. So they do uh, appreciate and want to try to investigate the ability of working with autonomous uh, assistive robotics. So this is the stuff. And as I mentioned, uh, for example, for the Komodo, uh, be able to advance for a more uh, agricultural uh, task, like a precision agriculture for, for a farmer, for example, to know what is the, the uh, stage of the crops in each day is something that is really uh, effective and cost effective for him. Instead of going and trying to assess by himself, there is the, the uh, system, the, the algorithms that assess what is the, the, the stage of the crops, but without taking and extracting the real time data out of the field, you, you cannot do nothing with it. So using a robotic autonomous platform for that is something that will advance the already existing algorithms and all, already existing all kind of uh, apps for, for the telephones and stuff like that with real data that will go into it will advance, will give it higher performance for all these systems. So this is the stuff that we see and it's coming every day, every week. We get a new task that takes these ideas and 
change it a little bit and we see that there is another application. ROS is basically uh, the phrase of robot operating system, which was developed uh, back in the US in uh, the, big, the, the, the middle of uh, 2006, 7, something like that. And today is something that is, um, it's not, I cannot refer to it as a standard in robotic uh, engineering, but it's becoming to be one. It's just widely spread. Most of the university around the world use it. And as, we, as the name phrase it, it's a robotic uh, open source uh, um, um, uh, system. Uh, and basically it gives it a lot of power because robot, as, as we mentioned, is a complex uh, system, basically. We have from uh, moving to navigation, uh, manipulation of an arm, uh, computer vision, everything combined in one platform. So basically to be able to uh, uh, master all this uh, knowledge and be able to uh, define the algorithm for making it work is really complex. And by ROS, it gives us a lot of opportunity to combine algorithms from one point to another. For example, if something was developed uh, in a Carnegie Mellon uh, University in the United States and we want to use this particular uh, system, for example, uh, um, uh, image recognition of an object that was developed in Carnegie Mellon, we can uh, extract this uh, information and extract these ideas and put it and implement it in our robot really easy. And by that, we don't need to have a really huge uh, company for be able to do a lot of different tasks with one robot. So this is basically the idea and the advantage of using ROS. It's an open state architects, arch, 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 architects, yeah, for, for how to uh, use robotics and by doing some, something that is generic for everybody, you can use it all over the globe. Of course, there is stuff that we uh, extract to others. There is stuff that we uh, uh, stay as our own IP and we don't uh, exceed to the web, but it it's depends. Again, with this ability, we can use a lot of simulations uh, to develop new algorithms and, and new abilities. For example, if a company comes to us and want to uh, investigate if it's worth and applicable to use the robot, we can show it for the first time the simulation of using the robot and after that actually do it, which uh, minimize, minimize the time that we can uh, show that, that something is working and uh, minimize the time that it will actually work in the factory or whatever. So this is again stuff that Ross is being able to give us. If we need less people to work on the algorithms and we can use the ideas and algorithm from other places, basically uh, the robot will cost a little bit uh, less. Uh, we need less time to uh, develop it. So less time, less uh, employees working on the robot means that the, the robot itself will be more affordable uh, for the client, for our uh, customers. So basically, yes, by using ROS and uh, we see it in, as, as I mentioned, everyday life because a lot of, a lot of companies comes to us because we are using ROS and they know that the benefits of using ROS for them and by using ROS that our systems is a little bit uh, more price uh, effective. So yeah, this is also something that we get from that.